Hi there. I have an interesting journal entitled, Can We Understand Everything? And I looked among all my little video toys, and there was no Socrates or Plato or anybody like that. But, you know, maybe the wisest thing we have is our babies. So this will be fun. You know, just because they can't say what they know and what they see doesn't mean they don't know. So this journal is from uh, Thursday, March 11th. Um, this year, 2010, 8.25 a.m. It was the first one I did on that day. The Mayan day was to seed or lizard. Can we understand everything? Oh, how I wish I understood everything. And that would be so grand. Well, maybe. How can I know that, after all? Well, what can I know? that I would like to understand more, just enough more and a little over, to help me best function effectively for the light right here where I am, or rather where this focus of awareness in this body resides. That much I know. After all, have I not learned that the point is the process rather than any goal or destination? Well, yes, I have. It is so true, and it's been a great liberation, too. It's one of those funny, backwards kinds of things. Man is brought up and socialized to seek out the goals, large and small. And for what? One wonders, where it is very misleading. Oh, we have the little wisdom sayings, like, it's not the boulder in your path, but the pebble in your shoe that keeps you from reaching the mountain top. And they help. They are so peripheral to most people's consciousness, though. Most people are so programmed the other way to the big causes, the big and little goals and destinations, that they cannot even really hear the quiet little sayings. It's like that, with the still small voice, I suppose. We must be at least somewhat still and quiet, too, to hear it, to receive its guidance. That, and the fact that the whisperer is not to be found in the mind in any case. So, most of us spend long years and many lifetimes looking for guidance in the wrong places entirely. Yet, it turns out that not only is the voice still and quiet, but that it brings our focus into the now, the present moment. Many of us are so very lost, spread out across time and space with worries or plans for the future and regrets for the past that we hardly come to center at all. The now is an unfamiliar place for us. And of course, that's part of why we don't hear the inner guidance. It only speaks now to someone who is present. Or maybe it speaks always, but we only hear it when we settle down into now. I don't know. I do know that it is there and available for one and all, though. That's a fact. People are so concerned that they may miss something. We even have to have our telephones with us at all times. This is so silly. But because we are so spread out time-wise, we are left unable to see the silliness of it. The sad thing, too, is that we sacrifice much of our intuition, our connectedness, by reliance on all this technology. It all but strips us of our ability to simply be present with the body where we are. 
it is evidence that we do not care for or about the now, the present moment, in the least. We allow any little thing to disturb it, to disturb our stillness. Because we have gone so far in this direction of placing no real importance, no sacredness on the present moment, then we be when we begin to awaken, it is very disorienting. We are then somewhat slower to recognize the ultimate importance, the onlyness of the present moment, its central location in our reality. I'm sure awakening wasn't such a jolt to people who lived before technology took over so much of life's importance. Our values are all out of whack with it. As time and space are one, one thing, or coordinate system, when we lose touch with one, we do so with the other. Let's say if I tell you I traveled 500 miles, I haven't told you much. Was it by horse taking a month or in an aircraft in an hour or a minute or less? I must give you both coordinates, both time and space to really tell you anything. Do you see? Likewise, an astrologer cannot work without time and place of birth, time and space. Anything else is useless. Interesting, but useless. That may be why, just as we have lost our sense of the sacredness of the moment of time, we have likewise lost sense of the sacredness of space, of our earth and our environs. We are trashing one at about the same crazy pace as the other, are we not? I don't mean to offer doom and gloom, of course. Change is the order of the day, of the age, and everything can change. It will not change out there forever, excuse me. It will not change out there, however, until we begin to change in here. The kingdom is within, the still small voice speaks, and, as the wise ones have ever told us, the way to change things out there is by going within. Though their wise counsel has been offered widely, and over thousands of years, it is up to each one <clears throat> to heed it individually. No one's enlightenment can save another. If you think someone else has done it or can do it for you, you've been misled. That will not bear good fruit for you, nor has it ever done for anyone. Maybe the inner teacher speaks a bit louder these days, for many more are waking up to a new world within. They become so changed by it that all are amazed, both them and those around them. What, are we cropping up with teachers and gurus everywhere? No, of course not. No wise one ever said, sit back, because I did this, you don't have to do anything. No wise teacher ever counseled his flock to trust that his enlightenment would suffice for theirs. What utter nonsense. Maybe that is at least partly why, though many are turning to spirituality these days, many are leaving the houses of worship to do so. There is a kind of an ultimate strangeness in the realization that comes to that it's the little things that count that really matter. I tell you, the source really does have a great sense of humor. And though I'm tempted to say 
It seems somewhat twisted at times. The reality is that we are the ones who got all twisted. And it's us trying to look back over the pretzeled nature of our phony reality that only makes it seem twisted. Yeah, and that's more of the humor, I'm thinking. Bye.